right, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can fade an image to blend in with the background. And you can see that this custom logo is, in fact, uh, somewhat transparent. And you can see the scrolling background in the back. Now, I've created this in a component. You can get this from my free components folder. And I've called it Fading Images. And inside of that component, we have two pieces. I'm using a shape to get the image and I'm also using an identical shape and I'm applying a multiply filter. And uh, before we dive into that, in this component, we have some globals we can look at. You can change the gradient. Here we have a radial. And if you notice, you do see a difference between the radial versus say the horizontal. We have the left side showing over here and uh, we can do a sweep. So it's completely transparent over here and it kind of fades to that transparency over here to this side. You can pick your shape. I'll pick a circle. Now we see that sweep gradient. If I come and apply a radial to this, that looks pretty good. So it's completely transparent on the outside here. We can adjust the width of the shape. The height's not going to change anything about the circle, but if I go to say a rectangle, the rectangle you can see that we do have a width and a height. And then one more thing inside of the globals here, we have a list global for outer or inner. And this is basically saying, which piece do you want to be transparent? If I pick the inner, the inner part's gonna be transparent. If I pick the outer, the outer part's gonna be transparent. And before I talk about those two pieces, those two shapes, I just want you to bear in mind this is a component. So you can come and add anything behind this and it will not be affected by the filter. For example, I'm gonna come add an image real quick. I'm going to take that image, position it in the center, and I'm just going to pick an image. So here we have the vintage custom logo, and I'm just going to throw this uh, beneath the component here. And you can see that it has no effect on the transparency of the custom logo back there in the back. Just going to delete that. And let's go into this component. So we have a shape for an image and a shape for a multiply, and you do want to arrange them in this order. For that shape, since I have a list global that I've called shape, that's what I've applied to the shape. And I've also applied the GV width and the GV height. And the only thing I'm changing here is the FX. And I'm using the uh, texture bitmap for this shape. And when you go to pick your image, pick whatever you want. And as a matter of fact, you can apply this to music cover arts by applying a code here. And since my son was listening to Blippi yesterday in the car, that is the cover art. But that same technique, the same multiply is being applied to it. I'm going to switch that back to the custom logo. And that's the only thing you need to apply to that shape. Now let's go to the other shape. And a way you can do this, once you've set up that initial image shape, just copy and paste that because you want to use the same settings for width, height, and the shape. And for this paint, I have a code applied to the color. If GV which equals enter, then I want to use this hex color. And if it's not, I want to use this hex color. And basically here's what's happening. If you want the inner to be transparent, then we want this paint to have a completely transparent color. And basically it's just the OO and it doesn't really matter what these numbers or letters are because the OO in front is gonna make that completely transparent. So that would be the inner part. But if we don't have inner set, then we want it to be non-transparent. And basically it's these first two letters here, FF. But an easy way for me to remember this, completely transparent, I just type in eight zeros in KOWP. If I want it not transparent, I'm gonna do two Fs. And then all these other Fs are just the white color. And these are the two easy ways to remember when you're applying the multiply filter. Speaking of that, I have the multiply filter applied here. And then underneath FX, since I have a list global for my texture, I have that set to GV gradient. And then I had that same color code applied, except I've swapped these two. In the original paint code, I had all the zeros here and then all the Fs here. So we're just switching that. Now you don't have to use all these globals, but it is an easy way for you to go in and tweak this very fast in your globals. Marley, Marley, bed. You go outside, come here. You go outside? Bit. 
Sit. Good down. Good boy. That's a good Marty boy. And with those settings and these two shapes applied in this order, because if I were to take this multiply and drag it here, it has no effect on that image. So make sure you have it in that order. And uh, yeah, there you have it. That is how you can fade an image using the multiply paint filter. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.